everybody. Welcome to Contra Talk. I am Richard, and my guest today is Violet Chikuni. Uh, she is a wife. She is a follower of Jesus. Uh, most importantly, she also is a blogger uh, or podcaster, video, whatever we're doing right now, uh, YouTuber. And uh, she's here. We're just going to talk about some different things, how she came to the Lord, and a bunch of other fun stuff. So, Violet, tell us a little bit about yourself. Well, uh, thank you for having me. I'm glad yeah. that I'm here. My name is Violet, Violet Chikuni. I have a show on YouTube that's called Barry and Babes. I live pretty much now, I live in Maryland, but I was born and raised in Malawi. Malawi is in Central Africa. Malawi, Most yeah. people don't know where it is. It's like a small, tiny country. But when I tell people, oh, I'm from uh, where Madonna adopted her kids, everybody <laughs> say, oh, okay, we know. So <laughs> that's funny. There you go. <laughs> That's good. Um, and when did you move to from this uh, from Malawi to the states? Uh, two thousand and six. So okay. I've been here like almost sixteen years now. Nice. And did you meet your husband there or here? No, like I met my husband here. Okay. But I know him back home in my country, but he didn't know me. My husband is also from my country, so it's oh, so wow. funny that. <laughs> Oh, man, that's another story. <laughs> but yeah, I, I met him here. So uh, we used to used to do um, hip hop back in the day. So we used to go, me and my girlfriend, we used to go to his shows. Oh, wow. That's cool. So then I ended up meeting him. I was friends with his sister, but I didn't know um, that they were related. Wow. They, now he does uh, a Christian hip hop. He also has his own. Um, he, he has his music. He has his podcast. It's called Six Things Above. I join yeah. in uh, here and there. So yeah. like, that's a funny story. I met him here, but he didn't know me back home. It's funny. Oh, that's funny. That's good. I love I love yeah. that. Love those types of stories. That's good. Yeah, we supported a missionary um, from uh, Southern, he's originally from Southern California. He's in uh -huh. Malawi now, um, pastor. He's been there for a long time, at least 15, maybe 20 years. Oh, wow. But anyway, I forget what town he was in, what city he was in. Oh, okay. That's nice. That's cool. Tell us a little bit about some of you. I'm sure some of my audience already knows you. Uh, I know a lot of our audiences kind of overlap, which is wonderful. Mm -hmm. um, tell some, maybe people who don't know, what, why are you doing YouTube? What brought you to YouTube? Uh, and so on. Yeah, well, um, I used to, like, I do have a lot of friends. And I do have a lot of friends, like, back home in my country. I did grow up, uh, I pretty much grew up in a church, but mm -hmm. I didn't even know that I wasn't a Christian until I became one. Wow. So, but what I have discovered is like a lot of women, um, they, 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 they don't know scripture for themselves because I was just like them. I was just like one of them. So I know I have friends out there, but there's no way for me to pretty much talk to them. But like then, like if I'm on YouTube, it's pretty much like a public square. I can mm -hmm. uh, reach out to people here. I can also be able to influence, reach out to my friends back home. So like I want women to be able to open their Bibles, to know their scripture and to know the word for themselves. Because I know um, I, if you ask me uh, back then, I would have told you, yes, I was, uh, I was a Christian. I know mm -hmm. the language and everything, the whole nine years. But my lifestyle wasn't in keeping with what it means for somebody to be a Christian. And I know there's so many women who are in same, same situation. They'll pray, they'll fast the whole nine years. But it's just like you need to have a personal relationship with Christ yourself. Mm -hmm. So that's what uh, drove me to uh, to pretty much have my YouTube channel. And then the other, the second thing that I uh, also made <clears throat> me to have my channel is nobody knows what's going on inside the evangelical world. You just assume on things. And there's so many, you know, you read books, you follow people, and you have no idea what's going on. But mm. now, you know, pretty much thanks to YouTube, you get to know and see things, what's going on. And like, you know, most of my people that I'm in contact with, my friends, they're not so much on YouTube. And then when I tell them things, they'll be like, mm, Violet, how do you know that? Do you just <laughs> making things up? I'm like, no, I'm not making things up. Like, look what this person is saying. Look this, what's doing. And then like, yeah, so many people are opening eyes. They'll be like, Oh wow, you know, thank you for doing this. Now I know what's going on. So it's so wow. it's so crazy because like information is coming fast and furious. Yeah. It's, now it's no longer about like oh Joe Austin, T D Jakes. It's like no it, people who you pretty much trust. Uh hey man, they've gone walk. 
So you yeah. need to know. Mm-hmm. No, that's that's a good point. It really is kind of a, it is, it's not, people don't really call it much anymore, but it, I mean, it was originally kind of alternative media um, <laughs> and having that as, like you said, and I say that too, the public square, because you don't have as much people, people aren't outside as much. Yeah. Um, and there isn't as much dialogue, you know, even sitting on front porches or picnics or parks, you know, yes. we still do that, but not nearly as much as we did say 50 or hundred years ago. Yeah, correct. And, um, and so this is really where the place where people, you know, can be on your phone and, or on your computer and you're going to be engaging with people that way. So that's, that's really mm-hmm. good. And it's Berean Babes, right? That's, yes. You know, Berean Babes. Go ahead and check right? out Berean yeah. Babes if, if you haven't yet, um, audience, those who are watching. So. Uh, you're m- way more concise than I am. Um, sometimes we talk about similar things and I, I definitely, I need to work on my, uh, precision. <laughs> so no, I'm just trying to be disciplined. <laughs> <laughs> but it's good, but it's good. Mm-hmm. Um, so how did you come to, you say, you said you grew up Christian, but what was something that, uh, really made you realize that you weren't probably you weren't a, G- a follower of Jesus? What you weren't really a Christian. What was it? Yeah, so I grew up in a Seventh-day Adventist. So okay. my pretty much my family is still Seventh-day Adventist. And uh, I, I know one thing that I was a sinner, like, but I knew my plan was before I die, I'll just make sure I confess my sins. That way I'll make my way to heaven. Because the Seventh-day Adventist, um, I don't know if you're familiar. I mean, you should be familiar. You're a pastor. A little bit, so, yeah. Yeah, so basically, you know, one, you can lose your salvation, and two, uh, worshiping on a Sunday is a mark of the beast. So you need to keep the Sabbath. Mm. So obviously, I knew I was a sinner. I wasn't keeping the Sabbath. Like, you know, you just do the bare minimum, but you know it wasn't, you know, the the way you're supposed to do it. So, you know, fast forward, I, you know, I came here in the U.S. Um, we got married together my, with my husband uh, in the Seventh-day Adventist. Mm-hmm. So then my husband studied to... Uh, you know, looking at the beliefs of Seventh-day Adventists, and then it wasn't matching up with what the scripture teaches. So, for example, they believe in soul sleep, they believe mm-hmm. Ellen G. White. Before even, when you're getting baptized, you have to affirm that uh, Ellen G. White is a true prophetess. Wow, so, yeah, no, I forgot that, yeah. Yes, yeah. So you cannot be, you know, it's just like if you're Catholic, well, you have to believe in the Pope, right? Mm-hmm. You. If you're not, then you're just like, no, it's you are in contradiction of what, what the Catholic doctrine teaches. So same thing as an Adventist, you have to affirm Ellen G. White as a prophetess. Needless wow. to say, you know, uh, there's this so many scandals, this stuff that's so untrue about Ellen G. White. So when my husband was um, uh, wrestling with the, the doctrine, what um, um, the SDA teaches, he realized like, no, this wasn't, um, it, it wasn't in keeping with what the, the scripture teaches. So then he said, like, you know what? I will no longer be going to uh, to church anymore. I thought he was just joking. Like, what do you mean? Then I just brushed it aside. Then one Saturday, my husband said, okay, I'm getting ready. I'm going to church. And they said, oh, no, I'm not going. You know, he wrote a letter to the pastor. He wasn't coming. But mm-hmm. I wasn't going to leave because I'm like, you know what? You know, Seventh-day Adventist is a true church. This is a remnant church. Uh, they keep the Sabbath. They go if you go to church on Sunday, that's a mark of the base. So I was just like, okay, fine. So he started going to a Sunday church. Then I kept going to SDA church, mm-hmm. and then many time we used to, uh, you know, have debates like, oh, you know, your sins have been forgiven, past, present, and future. I'm like, no, it can't be. You need to repent your sins before you, uh, before you die. You know, mm-hmm. and then we are. Having these uh, these debates with my husband, and he, uh, I was just like, no, you know, they'd be like, no, you know, justification, the doctrines of grace, none of those things were making sense. Mm. Then I kept going to church, then I realized, wait a minute, like, I don't know anything for myself. It's pretty much, you know, uh, the stuff that I learned, or, you know, I was just pretty much hiding behind my husband's faith. So mm-hmm. I had to be on my own two feet. So this kept on pretty much like two years, you know, I was praying because I was like, there's no way God would want me and my husband to be going to two different churches. Mm-hmm. And, you know, That's true. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like, you know, but our marriage, everything was fine. But I was just like, yeah, like we need to be going to the same church. So I was under, I was just like, okay, you know what? He's going to get to his senses and come back. And then we moved uh, to a different location. And the funny thing about it, like the church where he used to go to, 
was next door, literally next door to the church that I was going to. So he was <laughs> going there Saturday and he'll go there Sunday. Wednesday, wow. they used to have their Wednesday meeting. We also used to have a Wednesday meeting. So we we'll drop each other. Okay, you drop, you drop. When you finish, you come pick me or I'll come and pick you. And it was it's actually a covenant, um, covenant church. That's a church that CJ Mahin started, Josh oh, Harris. Okay. Yeah, yeah. That's the, that, that was the church before the shenanigans. Yeah. <laughs> so then uh, we moved uh, to a different area. And then uh, one day I didn't go to my church. He said, well, you miss your church. You want to come to my church with me? Then I was just like, ah, oh, okay, fine. I'm just going to go and visit. So this was a Sunday church. I went to that church to visit. And I never left that church up to mm. date. That's the same church that we go now. Oh, wow. So, yes, then, you know, yeah. Then, you know, uh, going to the church, grow, came to understanding of the doctrines of grace, the horn onions and everything. So it was just like, no. So when I hear anything, like my heresy antennas, they always go up. <laughs> They always go up, so I know. I'm like, no, I like, I know where I'm coming from. So that's good. It has to be sound doctrine. Yeah. yeah. No, amen. That's good. That's good. Well, you might be, but you don't sound like it. Why are you, or are you? No, I know you're not. I'm just kidding. But why, based on how much melanin you have in your skin uh, and being from Africa, why are you not a victim? Why do you not live a victim lifestyle? And I mean, I know we're half kidding, but I know. Um, I, I mean, to be honest with you, it's so um, these days, it's like being a victim, it's actually like a good thing, you know. Yeah. Like we are now in a victim culture. Before, like you who, who wants to be a victim? Like you fight that way, nobody's going to bully you. You fight that mm -hmm. way, you're not a victim. But right now we do live in a victim culture. And then if you're a woman. You the intersectionality that's where we are, right? Now I'm a black woman, so I'm on another level. Then yeah. I'm from Africa, I'm an immigrant, so I'm four levels up. Like <laughs> you are you are oppressing me. I can claim that card right now. <laughs> <laughs> the Venn diagram is all yes. over the place. Yeah, exactly. So yeah. no, it's like it's if you're if you are a Christian, your identity is in Christ. Mm, you imagine. can't be playing victim. Like, what do you mean when you say that you're a victim? So all these things we already know, it's very much subjective. Mm -hmm. And it's definitely, it has to do with skin color. I didn't choose to be black. This is how God created me to be. And yes, it's it, my skin color, everything I am has to give God glory. Mm -hmm. Like it's not, I'm not black by accident. So if, if, if anybody has an issue with how somebody else looks, then you have an issue with the person who made that person. Huh? And that's how yeah, I am. Yeah. That's good. So, you are having an issue with an image bearer. So you have an issue with God. So no, uh, claiming victim, all those things, it's um, it's not pleasing to God. It's pretty much sinful because you're lying. You're pretty much lying. You're creating something that's not there just so you can get something, you know? Mm. That's manipulation. There are so many levels that comes with people playing victim. And unfortunately, there's people who are actually truly victim of certain things, but now the way... Uh, the way things have turned around, it's like every even if somebody is a victim, like you, you want to ask, oh, so what happened? Who said what? You know, and yeah, it makes it hard to determine if the person is actually a real victim. But if yeah. somebody just being black or white by virtue of their skin color, that does not even fall in any way a category of somebody being a victim. Not now. Yeah, no, yeah. That, and that that's a great point. I like that mm -hmm. too. That it really dilutes what's actually happening i mean the same thing with people like well you're a racist because of how you look or you're not yes. or you're this or that it's kind of it's the exact same game and it's like well but all you're saying you're trying to and there have been you know prominent uh evangelical guys who you know look like they're related to me say oh i'm racist i'm this and i'm that i'm an oppressor blah 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 but i'm still trying to get rid of it or whatever well first of all that's biblically that's just nonsense right yeah. if you were actually yeah. that it's just nonsense. But further than that, like you said, you didn't ask to be born this way. I didn't no. ask to be born this way. Yes, exactly. Uh, you know, male, God female. Made it this, you know. Exactly. And God, you, by you God's design. With God. <laughs> That's good. Uh, but to have then people to say, "Well, I'm racist. I'm not, she's racist. He's racist. Yeah, we're all racist." That then just dilutes it and say everybody's racist. Therefore, nobody is. And the people who actually have an animosity toward 
an immigrant toward yeah. females, toward more, you know, melanated plus uh, or less melanated, you know, whatever, uh, or accents, no accents, blue eyes. I've got blue eyes. My wife got blue eyes. We only produce blue eyed children. You can't, we can't, our genetics can't produce anything else. And so, you know, are we superior or inferior? Uh, like, it's just, it's all a game. Yes. And it's, mm-hmm. it's, it's sad and it's encouraging. And that's why I, I love seeing your channel and just even wanted to talk a bit more uh, publicly. I mean, we po- talk privately in our, we've got a big group yeah. chat with everybody, but, um, you know, I shouldn't say that. It's a secret. No, uh, <laughs> but just to say, like, you look a certain way, the world says you should be the, you know, female yeah. immigrant, uh, and yet you're not because your identity is ultimately found in Christ. And that's where, that's the true gospel. That's the real gospel, the real yeah. redemption. Yeah. So it's, yeah. it's, it's yeah. good. It's really encouraging. Yeah. And also, to be honest with you, some of these things, they only work in an American context. Mm. So that's that's how you even know that this thing is, is definitely subjective. Because if it's true, then it has to be true everywhere else. You know, like, so let's say if you if you are in, I don't know, you you are in Finland. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, so don't, there are no victims in Finland? I'm sure there are, <laughs> but it, you see what I'm saying? Like, it just doesn't. It's all over the place. And like the funny thing about it, like even in my country, you're talking about 95%, even 98%. Everybody there is, is pretty much is black. Yeah. And when the George Floyd situation happened, and then people said they were marching on the street saying they're marching Black Lives Matter. So I was like, what a, like, where are you guys getting this thing from? So everything that happens in America, they just copy. You know what I mean? Oh, and wow. that's, yeah, it's just like, no, like America, they have their own issues. We have our own issues. Wow. We don't have, if you need police officer over there, like you need to go and pick up the police officer to come to you. There's no police officers driving around. Like it's, it's, wow. it's it just doesn't work the way the things they work here. And now they'll be like, oh, now in America, like the government, they'll be like, oh, we want to shut down everything. Like, even if you wanted to shut down where I'm from, it's impossible you know, but they want to copy everything, whatever they're doing. I'm like, you you can't be copying whatever is happening in America. This yeah. is a different context. Everything is different. But yeah, if, if America says this, then the whole world, you know, be like, okay, fine, let's do whatever the Americans are doing. That's yeah. also what's making yeah. things so hard and so worse uh, in other nations because they just want to mimic whatever is happening out here. Yeah. No, mm-hmm. and I think that's something that either our friend, people, friends, colleagues, you know, whatever uh family who are not believers but you know they like america but they're still kind of weary or they don't think we're that exceptional or or being american everybody wants to come to america i mean my my ancestors you're in you came here a little bit later than my ancestors did so what but we all came here because america's amazing right and it has the freedom and the liberty oh, yeah, absolutely. that is acknowledged by yeah. the creator yeah. Yeah. Uh, or that the creator gave rather and it's something that but they don't really realize how much the world copies America, yes. like you just said with Malawi. Yeah, yeah. good and things is fine. Copy for the good things. But there's certain things work here because this is America. It works that way over here. It doesn't work over there, you know. You yeah. shut down everything. People here can line up and get um, get food banks, get free food, things like that. Over there, those institutions, they don't even exist. So if wow. you shut down, it's not like the government is going to send you a stimulus checks. It doesn't exist. It's it's unheard of. So, yeah. yeah. So it's like, no, if you're going to shut down, how are you going to feed the people? You can. So there are certain things like you, uh, even if you wanted to, you, you just can't do it. And yeah. they want to do it. Like it, it's, um, it baffles me. Yeah. No, that's, that's a really good point. That's a really good point. Um, what, let's see. We, we talked briefly um, beforehand. You mentioned, obviously, Seventh-day Adventist, a little bit. That was your mm-hmm. background. And then you went to Covenantal Church. Um, I know you've touched on this some on your channel as well. Talk about ecclesiology and how much, how important it is, uh, or how you know not important it is, but, I mean, it is important. <laughs> but, you know, whether it is or not, and, and especially speaking to ladies, I actually do have a number of ladies who watch as well. Uh, I think some of them also watch your channel, but talk about your experience with ecclesiology and in your studying and, and everything else, um, what you think of it and the importance of it. Yeah, yeah, man. Um, um, ecclesiology is actually important. The, in fact, the reason why we are in this mess 
it's because people just don't understand um, that the Bible uh, teaches how the church should be. I can tell you even up to date, there are churches that are still closed mm. or in the name of like pandemic. So to me, I just don't see how you can grasp the understanding of ecclesiology and your, your church will be closed today in 2022. I just don't see how. There's no any other excuse. But then it comes also even as members, right? Like um, you have a responsibility as a member. Uh, what does the church look like? What uh, you as a member, uh, what are your responsibilities as a member? And then there are things that the church, church is supposed to do no matter what. Mm -hmm. And the idea of uh, the government dictating the affairs of the church, that is, is, is it actually baffles my mind. But then people will just be like, oh, no, this is what the government says. Just like, yes, the government has a place, but they don't have an ultimate authority. They have derogated authority, just mm -hmm. like the church, just like a home. You know, like the church cannot be telling you uh, what you should be doing in your home. And it's the same as you. You cannot be telling the church what, should, what they should be doing. So mm -hmm. there are even certain things like, okay, so baptism, this is a church ordinance. Communion, this is a church ordinance. And they want people to have communion at home. If you're having communion at home, that's not communion because right. that's not that's not something you can be doing at home. You're baptizing yourself at home. It's just like, the, but these are the things people do because they don't understand the doctrine of ecclesiology. And then if you grasp what ecclesiology is, then you know, okay, we need to have a church here. We can't have uh, women uh, preaching out here because that's not what the Bible teaches. So already, if you have that, you're operating outside all that. And you as a member, that's not you just to be sitting in the pews. You're mm -hmm. supposed to use your gift and your talents for the edification of the church, right? And to glorify God. But yeah. it's it's so personal. Things like, oh, I don't feel like it. Like, oh, I'm just going to do Zoom. Do Zoom all day, every day. That's not a church. Yeah. But we can't be having this conversation. People be like, oh, you know what? There is a pandemic. So... So what if there's a pandemic? It's just, it's kind of like, man, like the early church, these people were being busy. I mean, like, look at people in China. Like, uh -huh. if you have church today, especially in America, nobody's, you know, nobody's, nobody's coming to arrest you. So why can't we have it? So if we can't have it now when nobody's arresting us, how are we going to have it when people are protesting outside our churches? Uh, uh, we are preaching about uh, against homosexuality. How are you going to go to church knowing that there's people with their... Um, uh, uh, rainbow flags protesting. You aren't. You're not gonna go. You, yeah. How are you gonna go if you know you're not gonna be arrested? You're not gonna go if you can't go now. There's no way you're gonna go there. You know, like this. No, like in the Middle East, like you know, you might not even make it back home because they mm. might bomb your church. You see what I'm saying? But these people are still going to to their churches, and it's 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 crazy. I mean, like look at what's happening in Canada. You know, pastors being arrested. They still have fun. They still have to go to church, and then other Christians say, oh. No, they, they, they're just being extra. They're not being persecuted. They're not listening to whatever the government is saying. Like, you think the government is going to stop now with the pandemic? They won't. Yeah. They're not going to stop. Yeah. yeah, no, that's a good point. I mean, yeah. and I think that's <clears throat> an excellent um, when you kind of wove it throughout, but having a, ra a, a bad view of ecclesiology, which yes. is you know, just the study it's of the church. It's going to bleed right? over with everything else. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you, you don't have... I think I said it on Sunday, uh, like conviction is some, it's like a belief beforehand. You're mm -hmm. believing about this. So when it happens or when you have to do X, Y, Z, you'll do it as opposed to saying, well, you know, what will happen if, if I have to hide people from the authorities or yeah. what will I do if the people come to my house and this, or they demand that, or what will I do if the power's out for a week? You know, will we look after us or our neighbors? How will we work? You know, in these convictions of saying, you know, this is what I believe about the text of scripture, who Jesus is and so on. It's not, I'm going to figure it out and kind of put my finger in the air and feel where the wind is going, mm -hmm. but rather having that pre-belief, like you're saying, mm -hmm. now, how are people not going to go to church? You're, I mean, this is easy, right? It's still easy, yeah. you know, and there's still churches that are closed and it's, it's pretty shameful. Yeah. Um, but, yeah. you know. but I also think, you know, the bad ones that have closed, I think it's a good it's a good thing because I do see this thing is actually yeah. um 
you know, like uh, shifting, you know what I'm saying? Like just exposing, you know, it has mm-hmm. exposed the, the weaknesses of church, the weakness of believers. Uh, so much people are so fearful. So just like, wow, you know, like I, I, I do not believe if we're going to be faithful and stand on the biblical truth, we want to gather and then we, we admit it that God is just going to be, you know what? You guys, you, you're just going to have COVID forever. I mean, like, and with everything we know now, what COVID is. Like, you know, it's true. There's people who have COVID. There's people who have died because of COVID. But for the majority of them, it's like, you know, you, 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 you're you going to be fine. You know, yeah. you, you might not end up being dead. You might not be, you know, all those particular things. And even if all those things were true, does that give us a license to forsake the gathering? Because we are commanded to gather. Right. That's what the church is, according to the scripture. So yeah. those are the things um, uh, that we need to, we, it's now, you have like exactly what you say, like you need to make your decision now, not when it's already here. And right. quite, I mean, it's been even encouraging to see how God has blessed people who, who, who pretty much stayed open, stayed faithful. I know there's some who closed and they decided to open, which is good. I mean, you make a mistake, it's good. Okay, you repent you come right back up. So I know even those particular churches, right? Even if there was another pandemic, because they they, they learn from their mistake, they're not going to close. They're going to stay open. And yeah. the ones that remain open, I mean, God has blessed them. People are having two services. People are moving out of uh, different regions to go to their churches. Like, you know, that's, you know, God is going to grow a church in two ways. Faithfulness, or if you're going to compromise, because people are yeah. going to sit, because they want to hear the tickling ears. Seek a friendly because you're not going to tell them about sin. Or if you're going to be faithful, you're going to stand on the biblical principles, the word of God. Why wouldn't the church grow? Yeah, no, that's that's so true. I mean, yeah, I've, I've thought about that as well uh, as far as just a sifting goes. Uh, mm-hmm. And unfortunately, it, it, unfortunately and fortunately, better words probably, but um, that it is it has happened even at the church I pastor. Now I came in, I mean, I don't know how much, it applies or what, but I was hired at the end of 2020. And so it was already kind of this whole mess. And a lot of the people that haven't returned mm-hmm. are kind of still around ish, but they don't know me. And so I don't know if that's part of it or what it is, but I think, I think it's, we've had very, very little friction, which is nice, mm-hmm. you know, no arguing about carpet color and other such things. Okay. Uh, and so that's good. Listen, you know, you're at SBC, right? Cause you know, oh, yeah. SBC, oh, yeah. tradition SBC comes first. first. <laughs> But it's no, the people that are there consistently are are great. They're wonderful Oh, that's people. good. Yeah, it's better and, to have few, but faithful. Yeah. You know, like you, the Amen. numbers know. So you rather have few, but faithful, as opposed to you have a big membership, and then you don't even know if they're still there, if they're going to come, or if they just left. Few, but faithful, you can work with that. The ones that are there, those are the ones that you can see. That's your ship. Those are the ones, you know, you are responsible for that. I mean, there are other people, they have certain situations that they can't come, you yeah. can accommodate those, but we know there's other people, you know, I just say you know, they're Baptist in bed, you know, you're just going to watch the service in bed. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. It's, it's pretty astounding. I mean, I even thought that even before um, taking a pastorate and really just why, you know, why, why don't you want to be at church? You know, and, th- and there's always that question that I like to ask people either rhetorically, either from the pulpit or personally, mm. or even now, you know, why don't, why don't you yeah. want to be at church? Yeah. You know, is it because of sin? Is it because of hurt? Is it because you're just not a believer? You're pretending, mm. you know, whatever it is, uh, there is a reason. Sometimes it's a good reason, but usually it's not. Yeah. And it's, 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 it's hard to not get stuck on it, at least from my perspective. Yeah. I mean, like, yeah, you're a pastor. Yeah. But also the other thing that you have to understand mm. is, uh, right now, most people, it's because they didn't know, they were never taught what a church is, uh, what what it means for a church, what it means to have a member, and just following what, um, what the Bible teaches, what a church should be. So mm-hmm. now we have the pandemic, the churches have closed, people are whatever home, they are watching things at Zoom, they assume that's a church and everything. So now to be telling those people, oh, by the way, Zoom church is not a church. They'll be like, wait a minute, you've never said that before. Are you saying yeah. that just so you can get me inside the church? You see what I'm saying? But if people already knew about these particular things, that wouldn't have been a problem. Like, okay, fine, we close. This is whatever. It would have been two, three weeks. They'll be they'll they'll come right back. 
Yeah. So right now it's it's a reaction. Mm -hmm. So when you're operating out of reaction, and it's kind of like you're pulling all these other things. It's, it's kind of like too late. Yeah. But if you yeah. already had people, but these are the things that you just assume people know, right? We go to church on Sunday. The question is like, why do you go to church on Sunday? You know, why should you be a member? Why should we practice uh, church discipline? Mm. Why do we baptize people? You see what I'm saying? Like, these are the things that a church is supposed to be doing. Why do we have communion? Why do we uh, face the table? Why, yeah. you, you know, all those things like, okay, we haven't seen you. To be honest with you, I, I'm all for, like, you know, the Baptists are famous of this. Like, they, they do purge, you know, the membership purge. <laughs> I think that's a good thing because you yeah. need to know who your ship your your ship because you're gonna give an account for your ship. So if your ship is not in your congregation, you are responsible for that because you need to know why they're not there. Because you'd rather free that ship, like okay, you know what? You're gonna go to someone else's care. That's fine, but I know these are my ship. I'm gonna take care of this ship. Yeah. You are accountable for that ship. So yeah. whether they're coming or not, they're still member in your church. They fall under your responsibility, so it's not easy to be a pastor. I don't understand why women are clinging to be. I want to be a pastor. I'm like, <laughs> I, I wouldn't even want that responsibility in any way, shape, or form. Yeah. It's not easy. Yeah, it's not. Yeah, no. It's not just teaching. There are things yeah. that come with it, and it's hard. Well, and and I think a lot of it, like you said too, it's the it's the conviction before the the conviction to have, mm. but then that it's not taught, like you just said, it's. People are saying, oh, well, this isn't Zoom church. You know, like May 2020, fine. You know, okay, great. Most churches, I thought, and I was, I guess, naive. You know, most churches went back. And then I started seeing some other, you know, conservative churches that were going to be closed through the end of the year. And I thought, what? wait, what? Like, <laughs> what, what are you talking about? Like, we, I mean, it was already like eight weeks for us because I wasn't, I wasn't, I was actually preaching from my basement uh, for this church I was at. I did pulpit supply first because the pastor had quit before everything went sideways. And so we had a service and we we're on Eastern time in Louisville where we were living and we do service online. And then it was an hour earlier. So then I would go to the basement and preach and that was fine, you know, for, for six weeks or whatever it was. But after that, it was like, no, I, we got to get back together. And I was, you know, I'd text a few people here and there that were serving at uh, the church we were a part of. And, you know, they, I think they did a, a probably a B job, maybe B plus. I would have, I would have changed a few things. Um, but what, what we went back, you know, end of May and everything's been fine. You know, it, it's been no different really uh, than the say two years ago or a year before that in the sense of, you know, people do get sick, people do die, people do get in accidents, people do, you know, go to the hospital. You know, we all have this like very short term memory uh, it seems. And then it's just, you kind of scratch your head thinking, y'all hypnotized like what what's what's going on why are you it's weird i don't know yeah yeah so to, i just put those to from what i've seen i put the things in two categories mm -hmm. when it comes to ecclesiology i you know if if somebody is going to be a pastor they will know what ecclesiology is but then i think the members they don't understand what ecclesiology mm -hmm. is but for the pastors what i do what i have seen is like not understanding um the authority that the church has and the government, you know, like the spheres of influence. They will know, everybody knows what the family your responsibility is, right? You're going to discipline your kids and everything. So the fact that when the government was like, oh, and in fact, they, at the beginning, they were just like, oh, we we are asking for 10 days, you know? They weren't making a demand. They said, we are asking for 10 days. I would have been fine if it was just like, okay, you know what? The church, whatever the elders themselves have decided yeah. This is what we're going to do. Then that's fine. At least you're making that decision inside the church. But it was just like, oh, you know what? The, the, the White House has suggested this. And, you know, we all know where it is. Two weeks to flood in the cave. And here we are, 2020, 2022. Yeah. So for me, those are the things that I did see as far as, you know, when it came to pastors. Like, Because if you just under, you know, in the family, it's, it's even pagans know, okay, you're going to, children are going to be submitting you know you have the father's the head of the hair of the household and then you have a church so just like okay so these guys are telling you you cannot sing ah but we are supposed to sing you know in sounds and everything else okay so oh my gosh it's just like okay so now we've gone to another realm I'm like okay so if we in-house we debate right uh, you know like we <laughs> 
if we we in, in house we debate should we have um uh a forms of worship right like you, mm -hmm. you know you do as you please or you know it's going to be regulative principles so if you already know that so then how are you going to have uh somebody else telling you oh now you cannot sing it's just like yeah. okay if we're debating ourselves like okay we can use drums you can't use drums that's a different story so already you they've told you oh, you can't sing okay fine we, we're just not going to sing well even if it's just singing they have dictated something they yeah they have no business in any way shape or form they can request they can ask then it should be up to the elders to make that decision if they if they're going to comply but yeah. here we are just like oh no the government has said this like no there's a place for government but not when it comes to worship just yeah. like the government can be saying oh you cannot discipline your child you can no everybody knows that like they can't do that yeah if you're yeah no it, it's, it's you definitely that, the government do that yeah the i think it was california in particular uh newsom was telling people they couldn't sing and I just like it, like that's a you know, like what like you don't tell me what to do, I, like, especially something like that within within the sphere of the church. I mean, but you know, once they have power and they figured out a way to game and and can, they're never you know, gonna take power. yeah yeah. I, so what I mean, happened out here, like in DC, was um, not only that, like there were churches that uh, sort of like kept meeting, you know, was then other churches were closed. And those churches were calling on the police, the other churches that they were meeting. I was like, what? And uh, then uh, you already know they were, you know, oh, MacArthur shouldn't uh, meet, you know, write that letter and everything. And it was, this is, you know, this is the public information. This is Mark, uh, Jonathan Lehman and Mark Dave over there, their church. And they ended up taking the DC government to court to sue them. So I'm like, why are you suing the government? Because you're the one who was advocating that the churches should remain closed. And lo and behold, they actually went to court. They won the case. And there was another case in New York because everybody who took the government to court mm -hmm. as pretends for them to close the church, they won their cases. But people still remain their churches closed. So I'm like, nobody's coming to arrest you. Why can't you open the church? Yeah. So it wasn't like, oh, no, the government. They said, no, the government has got no jurisdiction. And the people who took them to court, they won the case. No, there's no pastor that was arrested because they opened their church in America. That didn't yeah. happen. You see what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah, just fines, but no, no arrests. Yeah. Worry, so. so, yeah, so uh, if you're not willing to pay a fine and everything, I mean, it's, 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 it's difficult. It's tough. Yeah. yeah. Well, ecclesiology matters. It really does. And having that what conviction does? beforehand. Mm -hmm. um, do you have any other thoughts? Any other comments you want to you wanna drop before we wrap up? Oh, well, man, I mean, I think to me, what I'll be, uh, it would just be like, also even us as members, like some pastors might be willing to take a stand, but they might fear uh, who is going to be there to take care of their families when, when they're gone. Mm -hmm. So if members show um, uh, faithfulness that even if this was to happen to you, we are here, we're going to rally behind you, we're going to take care of your family, then mm -hmm. I think that will actually give uh, confidence to the pastors, you know? The clear example is exactly what's sort of like happening in Canada. I remember when they asked James Cook, like, oh, is there anything, whatever you need, whatever it says, no, like, you know, everything, whatever they needed, um, the church supported his family in the absence. Yeah. So That's things true. like that, I think that might help like pastors because, you know, I can imagine if if my husband is a pastor, I don't want my, my husband to be arrested. And but, you know, he has a different calling. He's a pastor. There's certain things that he has to do. But if you see that these people uh, want to take care of their families and everything, I think it will be easier for them to make certain decisions. At the end of the day, they also they're just human beings, just like us. So, you know, we commend the pastors who who have demonstrated their faithfulness and people who are trying to do this. But also as members, we have a responsibility to support our pastors it's easier just to bash the pastors oh he did this he did this why didn't he do this you know but we also need to commend them it's a very difficult thing to be a pastor so we need yeah. to uh, remember to honor our pastors that's good mm -hmm. well that's good no mm -hmm. i appreciate that that's a uh, good marching orders for the mm -hmm. average church mm -hmm. member for sure mm -hmm. that's helpful well uh, thank you again for joining me and um yeah go ahead and check out violet's channel berean babes She's got a lot of great stuff over there as well. A lot of different relevant topics and cultural things 
uh, and also, but not just for ladies, but that's kind of one of yeah, your main, main space as well. <laughs> Encouraging ladies, females to, to get into the word yourself. Mm -hmm. So that's good. That's really good. I appreciate it. Yeah. Thanks for having me. I enjoyed this. Yeah. We should do this again. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. Well, have a good night, Violet, and tell your thank husband you. hello, and uh, we'll see you next time, okay? All right. Thank you. God bless you.